Happy Thursday! Welcome back to another Keeping Up with the Click High. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. If you guys are new to our show, make sure you type new in the comments below so we can give you guys a nice welcome. And also let us know where you're from. We'd love to hear from you and if they all want to talk to you guys too. I know. I know. Okay, it's okay. Um, if you guys aren't new, obviously you guys know. Anybody want a red puppy? He's a screamer. Huh. You're a screamer. I can't even talk. This is why half the time we don't start our show with all the puppies because they go crazy. Um, if you guys aren't new, then you already know the rules, but please bear with me for a minute while I just explain to everybody else what we do and how we do it. So if you guys have a question, please type it in the comments, but make sure that you put three comment, three question marks before and after your question so that my daughter, who is behind the camera there, can see your questions and make sure that she actually gets to them. It is hard to follow every single comment, so please make sure if you have a question to put the question marks. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please take a second and hit that subscribe button so that you get notified whenever we go live. <laughs> and um, you can join in every week. And then lastly, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button because we love to see that you are enjoying the show and also YouTube loves to see that you guys are enjoying what we are putting out there. So do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. And now we can get started with the show. Obviously these guys are a little older, so we have some six and almost seven week old puppies out here today. That's who we're going to start with. Um, and I wanted to start with them because obviously one of our topics is puppies biting and nipping and how to prevent that um, or avoid it, hopefully, but most likely it's going to be prevent. Um, moving forward and then also wanted to give you guys some uh, new recipes for Kongs because we're talking about puppies and teething and what goes great with puppies that are teething which is frozen Kongs and so I wanted to share that with you and I have a bunch of that stuff up here that I'm going to share with the puppies in a minute um, so maybe that'll keep them calm but before I go into this, Alexis, do you have, oh, I do need to mention one more thing, but do you have any questions real fast? No, I don't. Okay, and so one thing I did want to, um, I did this, this is new. We put our little fishing pole up so that the puppies could actually play with it because we always play with it, but you guys don't always get to see it. Um, and they're obviously loving it. If you guys are getting a puppy soon, that is in our little puppy um, shopping list. It's on Amazon. It's super cheap. So you can see how much they love it. <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts before they tear it down. Um, so we are going to give away something um, to one of our, this little guy, he's going to have to stay in my lap the whole night. Um, this is Oakley. He is Keanu and Jazzy's little boy and he is very, very, very needy. So, I might have to hold him. But I want to show you guys a couple of things. If you're new, you might not know. We have merchandise. It's relatively new. Maybe a few weeks ago, we launched some of the items. And every week, we're working on new things that we can share with you guys. And, of course, we don't really know what will work, what doesn't work, because we've never sold merchandise. So, you guys are the ones who are going to teach us what you guys like. But we made... Of course, we made bandanas. Hopefully, you guys all know that. But we made some specifically for puppy owners who are celebrating a birthday because I follow so many people on Instagram. And one of the biggest things I always see everybody having for their puppy's birthday is a birthday bandana. So I made these little bandanas with the help of my daughter. And come up a little closer. So we made two colors. We made one kind of more for boys, but girls like blue too. And it says, it's my birthday and I'll bark if I want to. And then look at this side. So this side's teal. Um, a little more blue, but not really. There is some pink in the polka dots, but for the most part it can go either way. So we are going to give away one of these today. 
And it doesn't have to be somebody who already has a puppy. Um, it could be somebody who's going to get a puppy, but at least you'll already have a bandana for your puppy's first birthday. They are already on the website, and I've got to pick up puppy poop while I'm talking. Um, so you can get onto the website and order one if you guys are interested in those. And then while I pick this up real fast, and then I'm going to show you the socks we made. They're super cute. Um, and so the socks are not on the website yet because we just don't have enough time in the day. I need 36 hour days. If anybody can get me 36 hour days, I could be so much more productive. All right, watch out babies. So we made, we showed you guys the pink sock the other day. But look at how cute this one is. Look at these black socks. So we have men's and women's, and I promise I'll get these up by the end of the weekend. I just don't have time, but I wanted to show those to you guys. All right, now I can get going. Oh wait, one more thing, I forgot. One more bandana we made. So a lot of you guys know my son, Brayden, is a Patriots fan. And if you guys do follow football in the Patriots and the Alaskan Kwekai, you'll know that Bill Belichick has an Alaskan Kwekai. His name is Nike. And we created this bandana. So it has a Kwekai instead of the Patriot and New England Patriots. So of course this is for Rue because Brayden's a huge fan. But we also have those on the website. And hopefully we don't get in trouble for that because it does say Patriots, but it's our logo. If I have any lawyers out there, let me know if I'm in trouble. All right. Okay. You guys always get in my bed. Yeah. Are we good, Alexis? Or do I need to? Um, Matthew gave us a sticker. Oh, thank you, Matthew. I should probably announce about that too. What? Um, does he have a question? It was a sticker. But he could still type a question. No, you can't. No, after he could still type a question. Oh, well, no. Okay, so if you guys aren't familiar, we have the ability to have super stickers and super chats now. And hopefully it's going to drink my water. Um, if you guys fail up to donating, of course, that money does go back into the, the puppy fund and supports all of the new stuff that we buy and share with you guys. Um, but if you do have a question and you do get a super chat or a super sticker, then you bump to the top of the list. So if you are interested in that, we would appreciate it. And we thank all of our loyal supporters. All right. And my, my, my puppy Ben is getting destroyed. Hey, we're just talking about teething and puppy stuff. So guess what? I'm going to give them their stuff and that will calm them down. I can't even stand in my seat today. All right, so we are going to talk about puppies and teething. Now, puppies have, usually when they go home at about eight weeks old, they, they have 28 teeth. But when they're an adult, yeah? Real quick, um, Matthew's question was above it. I just didn't see it. Oh, okay. Um, Go ahead. I don't know what his puppy's name is. He just said pieces or ground up. She won't eat anything. Any suggestions? Oh, yes. Okay. I'll share with you in a second um, on that because we have a puppy that, well, she's not really a puppy anymore. We have Nala who's kind of picky with her food. And if I set this down there, I'll gonna grab it before I can even talk about it. Um, and what we have found that works is a couple of things. If you got the new vet vitamins and you bought the sprinkle one that you sprinkle on, it's a powdery substance. If you sprinkle that on, that will help entice your puppy to eat. Get out of my chair, get out of my chair. Or you can buy, there's a lot of different toppers that you can put on your puppy's food. Um, or you can moisten it. So. One thing that we do when the puppies are pretty young and they're just getting their teeth in is we moisten their food. And what I do is I put a cup of water in the microwave for a minute. No, no, no. And then I soak 
the food in the water. And it takes like five, 10 minutes, and then it's really soft. For some reason, they think they have a whole different food when you do that. Now, I don't suggest you do that long term because, of course, you want your puppy to not be picky. You want them to eat their food that's hard because it's going to help with teeth cleaning, natural cleaning stuff. But in the short term, you can try. Anybody know this stuff? Okay. You can try that. Um, and if none of that works, then your puppy is probably uh, tired of the same food. I would suggest, if you haven't already, try switching flavors um, within the same brand. Try switching flavors and see if that helps. And if none of that helps, Matthew, you can email me. All right, we're going to give them some stuff so they get off my lap. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to go over this just so that I can give it to them. Um, I made a bunch of different things. Now, you can make um, Kong stuffed in so many different things. But just a few things that I made today is super easy. You don't have to cook, you don't have to do anything crazy. You take that food that I just talked about, moistening, and after you do that, here, it's right here. Um, you're going to put it in this Kong and you're going to freeze it. But what I put in there with it is some mushed up banana and mm -hmm. tiny pieces of apple. And it's just mixed in and I froze it. We'll see how, they haven't seen this or had any of this, so we'll see how they all respond. And then another one has peanut butter, cream cheese. Now, if you guys are going to put some peanut butter in there, make sure it's all natural and it doesn't have a lot of sugars and extra things in it <laughs> because that's obviously not good for your dog. Um, but they also have things you can just stuff in there um, at the pet store, Kong stuffing. I really don't like to use that stuff just because um, this is way better for them. You can put vegetables, you can put celery, you can put carrots, you can put a little bit of cottage cheese, um, plain yogurt. So you can mix any of those things in there with a little piece of celery or with a piece of broccoli. Um, carrots, frozen carrots are amazing. But I'm going to quit talking for a second to give these to them. So that's what's in these two. Okay, we'll see what they do with that. Now, I had a couple bananas that were starting to go bad. So they were getting mushy. And all I did was peel it back. And I used that banana that was mushy. And if you guys were on a few weeks ago, we bought these lick mats thanks to you guys. And so they're frozen, but all I did was take the banana and I just held the ends and I kind of just rubbed over the lick mats and it is mushed in there and it's frozen. And on this one, I also put a few of the apple pieces and it's frozen. So look, it's staying on and we'll see how they are, do with these. So again, none of these puppies have had this stuff, so we'll see how they respond to it. Um, it's not a whole lot of stuff, right, that's in there, but it's going to keep them busy for a while because it's frozen. It's also going to help with their teething because their teeth are hurting just like newborn babies. Well, not really newborns, but um, six, seven, eight-month-old babies that are teething, they need something good, cold, that's going to help relieve some of that pain. I mean, we got puppies all over the place. So we have a few of them on there. Let's see. If, is that, oh, look at you over here. You have your own Kong, and it's the big one. Come here, Mama. No. Uh, I have two questions really quick. Okay. Um, they're both from Tanya. Okay. And one is, how is Nova doing? How old is she? I started watching the live when she was just a little puppy. It's so interesting to watch her grow up. Uh, she's good, but she picks on the puppies. Um, to the point where she can't be in here without me monitoring her, which is a bummer because she's a little too rough with them. Uh, so I get worried. So it's fine. They'll go home soon. But without me constantly monitoring her and, and correcting her, it's just, I don't have enough time of the day right now. But she's good. She's growing. My gosh, she's over eight pounds, um, getting big. And her color is pretty dark too. So hopefully next week we'll get them back on. But when I have them in here, I can't bring her in. Well, I could. I just choose not to. It's too much work. And then the second one is, I've heard that grapes and, cho and chocolate are bad for puppies. Are there any other things that they shouldn't have? Um, right off the bat, those
those are the two things that are very um, thank you, commonly, Natasha. very commonly known. Thank you, Natasha. Um, and so they, there could be more things. Of course, there's certain mushrooms, certain flowers, certain plants. Um, but as far as food goes, grapes and chocolate are a big no-no. And the grapes is because of the skin. They can't digest the skin well. Um, and then chocolate is just bad for dogs. Sugar is bad for dogs, just like toddlers. Obviously, this is a hit. So look at how crazy they've gone. And now I can relax because they're not all over me. So do you have another question, Lex? Yeah. Okay. I'll let, go, I'll let you go ahead and ask, especially if Natasha had something. Uh, no, she just said, um, Oakley is so spunky. <laughs> yes, oh my gosh. And it's then a handful. we have a question that says, uh, oh, I think Catherine just answered it. Okay. But um, then Matthew said, uh, his puppy is Sansa. I oh, yeah. the name of his puppy. Yeah. And then he said that she wouldn't eat her food and the new pet vitamins um, would he would put on top, but now he's going to try the bananas like you suggested. <laughs> yeah. You can do any of this stuff, just mix it in because they can't just eat the banana if it's mushy on that, but don't give a whole lot because now you're teaching your puppy that they can be picky and you are going to keep catering to them. Mm -hmm. So you don't want it to be like, okay, here, since you won't eat this, I'll give you this, but make it as a reward and as it's fun um, and not that you're getting this because you didn't eat your other food. Um, and maybe that will help. And especially if you freeze it in a calm or something too. Jack has a really good question. He said, did the same thing apply for cherry tomato skins with the grapes? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't eat tomatoes. My husband does, but I don't. So I've never given my dogs tomatoes. Um, and I don't think I would give them tomatoes, but I don't know for sure. That's a good question. We should look into that. If anybody has a second, look it up and see. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, are we good? Uh, yeah. Okay. So that was not even a half of banana between everything that I made. And look at how crazy they went for that. So that is a big hit. Um, and I'm going to take these before they start going crazy and devouring it. Now, uh, a couple other things that you can put in there, I think I started talking about it, was like vegetables. So don't do all fruits, you know, because some of these fruits have a lot of natural sugars. You think you're so smart. And so you don't want to give them too many sugars. You also, you know, I'm not a big fan of giving dogs people food, especially at the table. However, they don't know that this is people food because we <laughs> we aren't eating off of the lick mats. We're not eating out of a Kong. This is in a special room, which is their room, right? So if it's in their crate, in their space, then they are not going to associate this <laughs> with human food. So the big thing when I say that is, you don't want to give your dog food off of your table, off of your plate, those types of things, because that's when you're teaching your dog that, oh, they can beg and you're going to feed them your stuff. Um, so plain yogurt, it needs to be plain, not flavored, not extra sugars, okay? Uh, cottage cheese, um, of course, all of their kibble. You can also put in there, instead of um, mixing like some liquids to make it soft where you can freeze it. You can also, and, and Matthew, this is something you might want to try also is salmon oil. Now I get salmon oil by the boatloads because I go through a lot of it. I have just too many dogs, but you can get the small bottle. This isn't cheap and it depends on the weight of the dog. These guys don't get it yet because they're too young, so we don't give it to them until they're a little bit older, um, but a, uh, up to 12 pounds is a half a pump, and then uh, 12 to 25 pounds is one full pump. So literally every day when they get their food, I give them one pump of, dog, of, of um, salmon oil on top of their kibble, and this, will entice your puppy to eat it because of the smell. So you could tell, like they're going crazy for it. Wow, 
little miss Naomi is. And Knight is digging in my chair again. Hey, get out of there. So Sam Noel is another great thing that you can use as a topper and as uh, additive to your Kongs or any of your frozen little fun games uh, that are going to keep your puppy busy. Now, this is another Kong uh, ball. And this is normally made for dispensing treats or dog food. But what I did, and this comes apart, you can unscrew this. But what I did is I put an entire um, bully stick inside of this Kong ball. I put peanut butter or bananas around the rim and I froze it. It's been sitting out now, so it's starting to melt. But it was frozen and this is going to be amazing for them because it's a bone that they absolutely love. So this is going to keep them busy for a long time as well. So we'll see what they do with that. And you guys all know how much I absolutely love my Starmark Everlasting Balls. And what I did differently today, and we'll see how this goes because this was a new idea is if you don't have one of these and you plan on getting one, the first time you do, you're going to struggle at getting the um, replacement inside of here because it's hard to get them in. You have to read the instructions. It says you have to wet this um, in before you can stick it in. So what I did is since I had to wet them anyways and I was already working on other things, they got the full out. I froze them because, wow, they were already wet. Why not just freeze it? And so I froze them, which is just making it cold. It's already hard as a rock, but it's cold, which is going to soothe their mouth and their teething. So this is my all time favorite, favorite, favorite thing to give my puppies. It keeps them busy for a long time and you don't have to replace the outer shell. You just replace the bone. And this is something that anytime you have a puppy that is constantly nipping or biting or chewing on your feet and all that stuff, you have to give them something that's going to entertain them. So this lasts them hours, 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 hours. I buy these every week. They're on auto ship for the replacements because I absolutely love it. Here, mama. You want one? Um, so those are a few of the things that we give them. Now that they're quiet, I can get my notes and go over some of the tips on trying to avoid and prevent your puppy hey, can you take that? Um, from, from nipping and chewing to begin with because you guys have to understand that we are talking about puppies and what do puppies do? Every week you guys see these puppies and they're biting on each other, they're chewing, they're shaking their heads and they're basically attacking their litter mates. They do that to their mom, they do that as they get older, that's how they play. But when a puppy does that to another puppy or even to a mom, if you see another puppy squealing, yelping, or the mom growling, that is the way that they communicate with their puppy, the other puppy, or their offspring that they went too far, they bit too hard. And so at this age, they don't know the difference. They're not biting themselves. They don't know what's too hard. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all a process on how they learn what is okay and what isn't okay. So they learn from their parents, parent dogs, they learn from their siblings, but now they're not with any of them, they're with us. So how do we do it? We obviously aren't going to bite them. We obviously don't want to squill. Why don't we want to squill? Because we don't want to get them too overly excited. So if we get them too overexcited, then they're just going to jump all over us and do it more. So we have to take that and instantly replace it with something that is going to preoccupy them. Take them away from your hand, take them away from your shoes, whatever it is that they're teething on, and replace it with something that is going to be soothing. They're not doing it because they want to hurt you or because they think that's how they're supposed to associate human communication. It's because they don't know any better. We have to teach them. If we don't teach them, they're gonna keep doing it. So we wanna replace it and not accept it. So when they do that, you need to move away, get them out of the way, replace it with something else. So, oh, you guys get back over there. I don't have time. 
I made a bunch of notes for you guys because I find myself all over the place. Can and Alexis, I, if you have questions. Can I ask them? Yeah, go ahead and while I'm doing this, you could take a few minutes to ask me some questions. Um, I know you breed dogs as a breeder, but do you have your own dogs separate, like ones are uh, separate from the ones that you breed? Like that we don't breed. Um, we do whenever we, depending on who it is that we're retiring, like Pika stay here forever, Hunt will stay here forever. Um, but some dogs, when they're done breeding, we will go ahead and place in other homes so that they can outlive the rest of their life with a, just an individual home with no other pets and they get all of the love. Hey, no, 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 get over here. Come here. Um, so... Yes, we have some that stay forever and some that do not. Oh, inner um, Opie, middle Opie, middle Opie. How do you name train? Oh, that's um, basically what you're going to do is you just are constantly going to recall whatever it is that you're trying to do. If it's you're teaching a potty training, whatever, you're constantly using that name over and over and over. And whenever they respond, it's yes and treat. So you should always, when you're training a new puppy, you get a new puppy, you should always have kibble, treats, rewards, something so that you are associating that with good behavior and something that you want. So when it is time to do name calling, it's everything is using their name. And when they respond, even if it's just looking up at you, even though they may not even really realize that that's their name, but they will start to associate that as time goes by and as they get praised for it, responding to that name. Yay. Jeremy said, so is there room for pizza in the freezer or is it all dog toys? <laughs> well, we have a fridge and a freezer in the garage and we have our house fridge. So it's a combination. <laughs> yeah, you see the big tray I bring in? And he said that Athena, a.k.a. Mello, is doing really well. She uh -huh. loves shoes and chasing tennis balls around the house. Oh, that is awesome. We miss her. Um, they have, if I remember correctly, Sasha and Trout's little girl. No, sorry, Cessna. They have Cessna and um, Simba's. That was wrong. Hi. Um, why do they squeak, a.k.a. talk? Uh, because Slash. they're a northern breed and that's genetically built into them. So um, just like the huskies, they are a talkative breed. So a lot of dogs are, are known for different things and they, I don't understand why, but it's bred into them. So they love to talk, especially this guy. How do you train your dog? How do you train a dog who isn't food motivated? <laughs> Um, it can be with a toy. So say they have a favorite toy, whether it be a squeaky or a ball. It can be with just praise. Sometimes it's just praise. Sometimes they just want to please you. And when they get that positive reinforcement, they want to keep doing it because that's what they want to see. Is they want to see the love. They want to see the attention. So not every dog is food motivated, but we do have dogs that are toy motivated. Um, and so especially when we were showing dogs, we had one dog specifically that everything was about toys. And so you just have to find what it is that your dog loves and associate it that way. Um, do they like water? Mm. So a lot of them do like water. A lot of families that have pools, they get them used to it at a young age. Um, we used to have a pool and when we did, the dogs had a beach entry they could get in and out on their own. Um, if you take them to the dog beach, to the lakes, all of that stuff is going to teach your puppy at a young age that water is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Um, a lot of dogs, they only want to go in the water on their own terms. So if you start young, you're going to have a better chance of your puppy enjoying the water or jumping in the pool. So not all of them do. Mr. Opie, you're a pain in my butt. All right, can you, can I keep going now? Um, I have two more questions. Okay, go ahead. We'll take those two and then we're gonna keep going. Okay, Tanya asked, how does showing work? 
Um, well, now it's not working at all, but hey, no, no, no. So when we showed, which was quite a while ago, but when we did, um, you actually have to register your dog. Of course, they have to be registered with the breed registry. So it's either American Rare Breed Association or with UKC because Alaskan Clay Kai are not AKC registered. Um, and then once you have their papers, you would register and sign up for those specific shows, which are all listed on UKC's website. And then when it is showtime, you actually will, just like they do in the TV, just like Westminster, you have a small dog, so it's a small breed. They go on a table, so you're going to do your little walk around, and then you'll put them on a table, and you have to show your puppy's teeth. So when they're standing, here, let's see how little it does. Um, when they're standing, which is way too young, come here, come here, come here. Um, and you have to have them stacked. So that's what it means to have them stacked, is so that you can see how the dog is standing. So that is a stacked dog right there, or some kind of sideways. So you don't want them to be too far forward so that you can see that where their, their neckline is and where their sternum is and then their back legs and what type of angulation they have, all of that. So, but this is on a table. And then your judge is going to come up and feel the dog's body, the bones, check his muscles. They're going to check his teeth, his bite to see. This is a good puppy. I should have kept her. Um, and see how it is. Make sure that she has a scissor bite. And if it's a boy, they're going to check for testicles. And they're going to check for temperament. They're going to check all kinds of things. And then you'll get your dog down off of the table. And your judge will tell you what to do. It's either a down and back, all the way around at an angle because they're looking for the movement of the dog at this point once you get going. So some judges want to be able to see the front and the back to see how the dog moves. And then some people are, or some judges are actually wanting to see that. And they want to see you go all the way around so they can see the side uh, movement of the dog. And then they pick winners based on the size. So we have 20 miniature standard, right? So you are able to um, get your win for your toy size, but then you can also go against the mini and the standard, and then it's going to be best of winners and best of breed. If you win best of breed, which is for the entire breed, all of the sizes, all of the ages, then you'll go in for best in show. And if you go into best in show, then you are going up against all of the other breeds who won um, in each group. So there's like northern group, herding group, that's a real fast, quick explanation. <laughs> yeah, real fast. <laughs> well, I was trying to go as fast as I could because there's so much to it. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to give you another question and then let you talk for a minute. Okay. Okay. Uh, how many years do you breed a year? Oh, it depends. Um, every year is a little different, and that's not something that I'm going to publicly announce because... This is YouTube and it's public forum and so it's kind of more private. But if you're on our waiting list, then I'll be more than happy to share that information with you. You just need to email me. Okay, are we good? Yeah. So I can go ahead and keep going now? Yep. All right. Oh, why don't you should pan over and let them see Dakota's. You have Dakota's puppies are right there and I'll go over there in a minute and show you guys. But I wanted to try to keep going on this. Do that? Okay, you're in your bubble. Are they, what are they doing? Sleeping, of course? Yeah. So they have their eyes open now. If you guys are on a list, you saw the new puppy pictures we posted. Oh my God, they're going so fast. So they were just born, it seemed like, and now they all have their eyes open. I don't know eye color yet. Um, in fact, I haven't even tried to guess because they're so young, but they usually know eye color by four weeks old. And as I get time, I'll get new pictures because now they all have their eyes open. Right now it's really hard because they have a film over their eyes. Um, so even though it may look like it's kind of blue, they aren't necessarily blue eyes. You are a colder, you are a colder blood. Um, but there's the pup pups. Dakota's just like, hey, I'm frozen. All right, so um, puppies are 
are actually drawn to movement. So like whenever you see our hands are moving, when you walk in the room and you're walking, your feet are moving. If you have a flowy dress on or flowy shirts, they see that movement or laces and they instantly are drawn to it because just think about it, when they're little and they're with their mom and their siblings, their mom's tails are wagging, their siblings are all over the place, it's constant movement. So they're naturally just drawn to that. Um, and so again, they're going to do just what we don't want them to do, which is attack our arms, attack our shoes. Um, and so we want to try to, again, replace that with something that moves. What better way to give them something that they already like to see is movement. Balls, rolling the ball. How many times do you guys see the puppies chasing the ball? It's because of the movement. Or this right here, we have this little fishing pole toy and they love it because we can drag it around, right? It moves, they can chase it just like they could chase their siblings. Look at this puppy. He's not spoiled. Um, but the fishing pole, is amazing. So why I hung it there is because even though it's not moving right now, if one of them reaches up and grabs it, it's going to all start moving and then they instantly are going to be drawn to it and start chasing it or trying to bite it. So any of the toys that actually wiggle and move around are going to be amazing for them because it's going to move and it's going to entice your puppy to go chase that and leave my shoes alone. Come here. Um, Alexis, you'll just have to tell me if you have a lot of questions, okay? Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Heather. I feel like my, my, where are these stuff? Um, all right, let's see. Oh, so whenever you are replacing your hands, your shoes, whatever it is with something that you want your puppy to chew on, then you want to be careful, especially if you're dealing with kids that are trying to do this is that you don't want it to be something that's small, smaller than my hand, and whenever I go to give it to them, they actually bite my finger instead of the toy. So if you're doing this with your children and you're trying to teach your kids um, to replace something, make sure that the toys that your kids have are bigger than their tiny hands because you don't want them to actually get bit. These puppies' teeth are super, super sharp. So it will hurt, and I mean, the kids will cry. Hey. Um, so you want to be careful about that because we don't want our little babies getting hurt. Um, so the trick is um, that you want to avoid, and I'm here I am talking, and you won't leave my laces alone. Um, the goal is to actually replace, like I am talking. Uh, the, oh, I know what I was going to say. Okay, so the goal is that you want to get your puppy to a point where they are already exercised, already pottied, already fed. So when I talk exercise, it's mental and physical exercise. Already done their training. And if they are still nipping at you, still trying to eat your shoelaces, chills trying to bite your hand, then it is possibly that they are overstimulated. And if they're overstimulated, they are cranky. Just like when we have toddlers. Toddlers get cranky if they're at a birthday party all day long and they didn't get their nap in. So you guys see these puppies all the time. Uh, they crash after 20, 30 minutes and they'll sleep for one to two hours. So an eight week old puppy, honestly, will probably sleep 16 hours a day. That's a lot of hours, but that's how long they sleep because they're growing babies and they need a lot of rest. So if we don't know that and you Quit eating my stuff. Here. If we don't know that, we may not let our puppy get enough rest. If we have kids in the house and everybody's home from school, then what happens? We play, play, play with the puppy and we're overworking them, overstimulating them. So it is also important to make sure that your puppy gets naps, a lot of them. Okay? If they are not napping every two hours, Something's wrong. They need to nap. And they should be napping for one to two hours. So you want to make sure they get their naps. Also, when they are tired, it's the perfect opportunity to put them in their crate and let them get them. I'm sorry, Oakley. She just pushed you off. Disgusting. 
um, put them in their crate and let them get their nap. Cover their crate. We don't always want them next to us. We don't always want them um, sleeping with us because this is all part of the process of crate training your puppy. So give them that break. Give them a chance to get used to their crate. If they're tired, it's going to be that much easier for you guys to crate train your puppy. So um, make sure you don't overstimulate them. Okay. And then um, teething. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Okay, so the teething stage is going to last until they're about six months old. It's not just until they get their adult teeth. It's going to be about six months. So puppies will start losing their baby teeth when they're about three to four months. Mine usually around three and a half months, but anywhere from three to four months, they're going to start losing those baby teeth. Alexis, what is going on? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Um, I think she disappeared to go potty and just left me hanging to dry. So you got to remember, they'll lose those puppy teeth, but when those adult teeth come in, it doesn't mean you're done yet. So it's going to take some time. You guys have to be patient and you have to understand that they are going to bite and chew on everything if you allow them to. <laughs> I have to fix inventory on the website for the bandanas. Oh, did you not? <laughs> okay. That's, gotcha. so if Gavin can read the questions while I do that, I was yeah. trying to explain how to do it for him and he's like, I don't get it. Yeah, that's, that's fine. <laughs> we just got those bandanas up and apparently we didn't put the inventory. So we were rushing. So we got Gavin is now my, my assistant. Oh, and re remember Gavin, they said they wanted to see you in the girl <laughs> shirt. Maybe. Um, okay. So let's see. Oh, if you guys are looking for a quick fix on how to prevent and how to stop your puppy from teething and biting, nipping, that stuff, you're never going to find it because it doesn't exist. So you got to remember, they are born biting and chomping on their litter mates and on their mom. So it's going to take a lot of time and patience and training for us to teach them that it might have been okay then, but it is no longer okay. And so make sure you're patient. Um, let's see. What are you doing, Opal? Huh? I need to come up with a name. Hey, no, 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 no. All right, let's see. This is why I don't have no pets. Um, okay, so if you work through all of these tips and you've tried all of this stuff and none of it works, your puppy doesn't need a nap, they're already rested, they're already fed, they've already been exercised mentally and physically, and none of that stuff is working, <laughs> um, then, uh, stop biting me. Then, let's see, I lost my spot. Then you have to make sure that you're actively engaged in training your puppy and replacing those things. So a lot of times it's miscommunication on us to our puppies. So they don't really understand what it is that we're looking for and what it is that we expect out of them. So if we don't spend the time and energy to do that consistently, right? You can't just do it today and not tomorrow because they don't learn overnight. It takes a lot of time and patience. It's just like potty training a puppy or potty training a kid. It, it doesn't just happen quickly. So you've got to make sure that... I'm talking. I'm talking. Um, you got to make sure that you are fully in. You're completely engaged. You are completely consistent and your puppy understands you. You can't use one thing one day and another thing another day because you're just confusing them. So make sure that all of that is consistent. I'm going to get them some of these bones real fast. Gavin, do you have any questions while I get up here? Yeah, there's a few. Okay. I'll let you uh, go ahead and say while I get them um, these. Are you the only one due soon or in the near future? Yes, she is. In fact, she's right over here. I'm going to bring her in in a little bit so you guys can see her figure of belly. Um, but yeah, she is. Cool. 
Any others? What you got? Ooh. How often do you get red puppies? Oh, we just talked about that a week ago. Okay, so um, if you didn't watch last week, I'm guessing you didn't. Here, pop up. Then um, you missed it. We talked about percentages, and I went back to the last few years to see, like, what is the percentage that we get um, specific colors? And the red and whites is anywhere between 15 and 20 percent um, of our puppies per year that we have. So. 20% of the time, we get reds. And Catherine asks, which one did you decide to keep? Nadia? <laughs> I, let's see if you guys can decide. Let me see. Oh. Hi, come here. She's asleep. Huh. Oh no, that's you. I still can't tell them apart. All right, so let's see if you guys can figure out who I kept. We have Nadia, gray and white, Naomi, black and white. Very different sizes. So when you look at, we talked about this, we might as well use this as a little um, education because we have people that may not see this every week. All right, watch out. Let me go, let me go. So we talk about sizes a lot and um, their heads their paws and their ears, their height, obviously, their weight, a lot of things. Does that, I should turn this light on. Um, and so I am not a big, big fan of keeping a bunch of little uh, Kukais as breeders because they can cause problems for me. Emergency C-sections, that type of thing. And so when we look at their heads. Am I good? Oh yeah. Um, there's a big difference on their head size, right? There's a big difference on their body and their weight. They were pretty close in weight. Um, as far as their paws go, there's a difference, but it's not huge. Okay. And so, Although I absolutely think she's gorgeous and she has really, really nice structures. When I talk structure, that's the actual uh, body bones configuration of the dog. So if they have good structure, they're going to have good movement. If they have good movement, they're going to be, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> they'll, they'll be very um, well-rounded. They'll probably be healthier because they aren't going to have joint discomfort or they're not going to walk funny because everything is proportionate. So when we talk about all of that, those are super important as a breeder. So she has really, really nice structure and movement, great care, tail carriage, really, really pretty head, um, but she's too small. So I decided to keep Nadia. So the gray and white's going to stay here and then little Miss Naomi who will probably be a toy, if not a very small mini, um, is going to get offered to the list, along with Little Miss Oakley. Um, sometime this weekend, since it's a holiday weekend, I should have time. Hi! Uh, so, that's it. Next. Do you have another one? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Tanya asked, can we see Nova? Oh. I just talked about that. We're not bringing her in this week just because... She's really picking on the puppies, and I have so many different things going on. So she's not coming in because then I gotta take all of them out or I gotta babysit everything. So not happening. But I have Aggie right here who's gonna come in, and I'm gonna hop over here in a second and I'm gonna show you uh, Dakota and her puppies. So next weekend, I promise I'll start off with them. That way you guys can see them before I get the puppies in. And then she asked, Are you going to keep any of Dakota's puppies? No, I don't think, <laughs> hi, BB. I don't think so because unless something happens with Naomi or um, with Oakley, but I can't keep all of the puppies. It's a lot of work to raise dogs, um, especially when I'm trying to raise puppies and sell them, but it's a lot of work for our family, so probably not. Are we good? Nope. I'm back. Um, how often 
do you brush regularly versus how much you brush during when they blow their coat? Mm, good question. So if they're not blowing coat and if they haven't just had puppies, um, it's honestly like it should be every week. And you're talking 10 minutes. It's not a long um, grooming session. But you just want to constantly promote the growth of the new fur and get out any loose dead skin that's or dead fur that's coming out um, because that's going to help speed up the process. So once a week, 10 minutes, it's not a big deal. When they're shedding, it's every day, sometimes a couple times a day. And the process can be 30, 45 minutes, depending on if you get them at the right time when they just start blowing their coat. Because if they just start blowing that undercoat, and it just keeps coming out, coming out, coming out, it'll take a little bit. But if you do it while you brush um, and wash your dog kind of at the same time, that's really gonna help too, because if you wet them, and what I do a lot of times, I'll put conditioner or even just the shampoo and then comb them out that way because it's already so loose and it actually gets a lot more out. But we still gonna do it every day, every day. Is it official that you're keeping Oakley and are you keeping any of Dakota's? <laughs> and which one of Siggy's are you keeping? Which one are you on number two? Yeah, so I think hopefully you're, you're on because we're keeping Nadia. Yes, we're keeping Oakley and we are not keeping any of Dakota's. Which puppies are next to be offered? It will be little Naomi and Oakley. No, Ocean, not Oakley. Oakley's staying, but Ocean is his little sister. What happens to their baby teeth? Do you find them? <laughs> yes. That's, it's so funny because we find them randomly just all over the place. At eight weeks, they don't lose them, so we don't see them for all of these puppies. But we, especially when the dogs all play like tug of war and they're chewing on things, and then it's like randomly we go to sweep or vacuum, and there's the tooth, oh, there's the canine, there's the canine. So, yeah. Um, should you start crate training as soon as you take them home? Yes, the day you take your puppy home, definitely. My puppy is four months old and has blown his adorable puppy fuzz. When would you estimate their undercoat will come back? We live in California. Um, so as they blow, they should be getting their adult coat in relatively quickly because they're still really young. So whenever they start to blow at this age, um, it's already coming in. Once they're older, it'll take a lot longer. But I would say within a week or two weeks, you should start to see it getting thicker and thicker. Hey, no. No. Yes. Do the puppies ever choke on the bigger bones? Um, no, I mean, I just have to be careful. Like if, if these guys can't really get these um, too small, but if I have the other dogs chewing on these and then they get really small, then I have to be very careful. Um, so these I'm good with. And then this stuff here, no, they don't choke on any of that stuff. Um, a lot of things too that you can get for them is um, any type of nyla bone or uh, no hide bones. Um, of course, raw hide's fine too. You're gonna read all kinds of stuff on the internet. I've been giving my dogs raw hides since I've had dogs, never had a problem. Just don't make sure that they don't get it in their mouth and try to swallow it when it's small. So once it gets too small, throw it away. Um, we had two people guessing Naomi and one, two, three, four, five, six people guessing Nadia. Okay. Whenever you ask. Yeah, so more getting, more thought of Nadia. Um, yeah, I mean, I liked both of them. Um, it was a little easier with Naomi just because we already have Nova that's black and white. So it's like, well, we have a black and white we're keeping. And it'll be really cool because we'll have a gray, a red, and a black that we'll be raising around the same time. Of course, Nova's a little bit older, but it'll still be fun. Um, I've read various responses on the clique head being very shy around humans. Is this true? <laughs> Um, yeah, you're going to read so many different things, and, and that's not a generic answer. I mean, a lot of it just depends on how they're raised uh, before they're eight weeks old, and then, of course, how much socializing you do with your puppy and um, how well you train your puppy and get them out because the more things that you expose your puppy to, the better chance that your puppy is going to have 
a very sociable personality. So a lot of that has to do with you, but it is super, super important about the puppy, of course, babies. So I will say, in my opinion, no, but I can only speak about my puppies. Are you going to be offering the one you're not keeping? Yes. <laughs> to our waiting list. Only if you're on our waiting list. Yes. Mm -hmm. No more questions that are about her. <laughs> Can you remind us all of the pee names that you chose? I have the page open if you don't remember. Oh, go for it. I don't remember. We have Pumpkin and Paprika are the two reds. Paisley, Poppy, and Peaches as the black and whites. That's right. And then... Those are for Dakota's puppies, if you didn't know. Yeah. Um, how do you know they're blowing their coat? <laughs> oh, you'll know. <laughs> It'll be like poof. There's fur everywhere. And literally, it's like thick patches where it just starts clumping. You can literally pick it and just like cotton picks. Yes, you'll know. <laughs> when do the females get their first periods and what do you do when it happens? Um, so most dogs <laughs> in general um, have their first peep between six and nine months. And so this breed's no different. So six to nine months, the smaller they are, usually the little longer it'll take. Um, and then it's every six to nine months after that. So some of our dogs actually go into season every six months, which is twice a year. Some of ours only hit once a year. And then the next year they'll hit twice because of their cycle. Um, so of course, you want to try to spay your dog before you even have to deal with that because it's just a lot easier and you don't want to have to deal with neighbor's dogs or not being able to take your dog to the dog park or even to the neighborhood because it's just crazy. Those dogs just come out of the woodworks when they smell a female in season. Um, and what happens is you want to put on a doggy diaper or something to protect your furniture or your floors because it's messy. That's the best way to explain it. It's mm -hmm. messy. Um, when are you going to retire Oakley's father, and how old do you usually retire? Um, so boys retire very differently than females because they don't mind continuing to breed, where females, obviously, it's a little harder. They have to have, you know, give birth and raise litters, and so um, we retire them between six and seven normally, and then boys Honestly, it's up to the boys. So if they are starting to slow down and not producing um, many puppies or having what we see problems with any of their offspring, uh, then we'll retire them. But um, if not, then as long as they're still producing good puppies and they're happy to do it, trust me, um, and they're of course healthy, then we'll keep breeding them. So boys is very, very different. Um, with regards to when we are gonna retire him, I am not going to retire him until I know for sure that he has his testicles and that he is um, of quality. So once I know that, then I'll work on replacing uh, or retiring him and getting him neutered. And then he will be offered, of course, to the waiting list before he's um, offered to anybody else. And then from there, we will just announce it on our Facebook group if, in fact, um, he is available. Um... Are you the only breeder that does live streams and why? I am the only clay type breeder that does live streams. Um, and why I am? Probably because it's expensive. It's time consuming. Um, not a lot of people are comfortable on camera. Like, There's so many things that go into it. But I will say, like, if you look back at our channel a year and a half ago, two years ago, uh, probably about a year and a half ago, the live streams I was never on them. I didn't talk. We just <laughs> let the puppies run. And my husband always said, I needed to be in there. I needed to be in there. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. So I can understand. It's it's something you have to get used to. Like you're talking to a lens, right? There's no people. I don't see you guys. You see me, but I don't see you. So it's just awkward. Um, and then as far as why, other than that, I'm guessing that's it, but a lot of people just don't know either. Like they don't, they're not comfortable or no technology. I mean, we've invested a lot of money into live streaming, so it's it's just not cheap. 
but yeah, we're the only ones, probably. Catherine said, why? Because Desiree is the best <laughs> in all <laughs> Thank caps. Thank you, Catherine. No, I mean, it's honestly, once I started doing it and finally got over my fears of it, um, now I absolutely love it. Can you guys let Dakota out? Please? I was just going to ask you if she's, she can. She's bouncing. She wants out. Um, I absolutely love like connecting with all of you guys and getting to know you guys and being able to watch it. Like, well, you know, I can't see all of you, but I can see the comments now up here. Um, but I watch this every Thursday after with my husband. We see everything, and I just love that community feeling and getting to know all of you guys. And, like, honestly, like, you guys teach me stuff, too. Um, but more than anything, it's just being able to share the life that we have with these dogs and how much joy they bring us is, is rewarding in itself. So... for a minute because I'm not going to be able to answer. I'm just going to show you her puppies for a minute. All right, I got to get my stuff though because I have little pups that will get into my thing. All right, let go. Let go, let go. Yeah, in a minute, yeah. 
They're all gone. <laughs> all right. Oh, they went there following me. Okay. Are you over here now? And the sound is on? Hi. You'll see. Okay. So, as you guys know, we've got five babies. Let me pull this down. All right. They're all girls. If you're on our list, hopefully you guys know that. And we've got, so remember their eyes are gonna all look pretty blue because they just opened them not too long ago and they have a film on their eyes. And that one was the bigger red. So they're small. I forgot to turn, I forgot to plug this light on. Plug it in. Who did that? Um, but I think we're still fine. So the two reds, there's one that's a little bit bigger than the other. Oh, oh we are not. I need that light. Can you give me that light right there just to unscrew it? I forgot to plug it in so it died on me. Um, so we'll wait a second and then I'll show you. But out of the two reds, we have one. It's actually the smallest in the whole litter right now anyways which is her, but they, they look very, very, very similar. I don't even know how I have to look at you guys. The, the camera's way up here. Um, and so they look very similar. Do you think they're, s oh yeah, perfect. I got an assistant. Um, all right, we have, a, we have somebody going to hold the light. I'm going to hold it up here. Okay. So, you want to put it on this side there? Yeah. All right. So, that's just the other little girl. So, if you look at their markings, they are almost identical. The only way I could tell them apart is because of their size. Huh. Okay, and that's the other red. And then, there's two black that look very similar also. Right here. And here, you can tell them apart, but if you don't know, you only see one. That's the white right there. Look at that! Look at this tongue out! Look at this tongue out! Who has that tongue? Who has that tongue out? Okay, so this is the biggest one right now. And then. Another one, which is very similar. Her eyebrows are a little further apart. Now, this one, I don't know if you guys could see that. I'm pretty sure you can. Her eyes are very, very blue. You see how blue they are? Does that show up pretty good, Lex? Yeah. So, I'm pretty certain she's going to be blue, but... Party eyes are pretty hard, right? Remember, we can't tell party eyes yet. That's one of the reasons why I don't talk about eye color yet because um, it's really hard to see the party eyes um, for a little while. And then the last one. Now, the last one is the only one that has a split mask. Aw. And I'll be honest. I'm sure you guys can tell how blue her eyes are. This is a lot of blue. <laughs> and she's tired. Really tired. You're tired, huh, mommy? Yeah? She's gonna yawn some more? No? I was gonna talk. <laughs> Alright, that's the babies. So that's all five of them. Three black, two red. All girls. Aw. Now I'm going to go back over there. That way you guys can keep talking to me because it's harder for me to sit over here. It hurts my back. Um, all right. Oh, yeah. Uh
cute though. Oh my god, we were so excited whenever we made those. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Hey, get out of my chair. Now, remember, you don't have to have a puppy um, from us yet, but um, obviously it's a birthday bandana, so hopefully you're getting one if you don't have one yet. And if you guys have like two minutes before she's going to pick, it is going to be from a super chat or super sticker because Obviously, it cost us money to make them, and when you guys support us, we want to support you, so she's going to pick somebody um, that way, and hopefully not somebody that just recently got one, so we'll see what she does. In the meantime, Gavin, is there any questions that you um, can see you want to answer? <laughs> can they, they can see, they can see, oh, hopefully, right? absolutely perfect. <laughs> you guys have to get the fishing pole, I'm telling you. <laughs> they're like cats. We talk about this a lot, like that they're like cats and how cat-like are they? They love that fishing pole. <laughs> All right. Ready? New from Australia. Did you see that? I just seen it right now because you said it. Hi mm -hmm. from Australia. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad we have you on. How awesome. Um, are you ready for some more questions? <laughs> I am, but I'm getting a kick out of their playing with the toys. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go back from before we went to Dakota's puppies. <laughs> Tanya asked, how many collar sizes do you usually switch from? Oh, uh, um, not many. Um, two to possibly three, depending on the size that the dog ends up being. So even like the biggest dogs is three. So you start off with like a eight to 12 or a 10 to 12, and then you're gonna go like 12 to 14 and then possibly to 16. That's it. She didn't come in. Oh, she didn't? No. She's just wondering. Can you talk about first night or two home and crate training and what to expect? Um, from first Lindsay. night home. First night or two. Oh boy. Um, you should expect no sleep. Um, a lot of, obviously, is going to be a lot of just bonding with your puppy and getting them accustomed to your family, your home, your routine. Um, but it's also the, the very first night is the perfect time to start with great training. Thank you, training. Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. Great training, leash training, um, commands, learning their name. So there's a lot. Now, we don't want you to overstimulate your puppy to the point where, um, they don't respond, but just be prepared for a lot of crying because they aren't going to. Dakota needs to be put in a crate for a She minute. just hopped out. Oh, she hopped out. Um, your puppy doesn't know um, how to respond with that. I can't talk. They saw her. Babe, can you put her? Yeah, thank you. They saw her. Um, sorry. I got distracted. I know. I know. Okay. Come back over here. So you want to, they don't know how to respond to um, being alone. They don't know um, what it's like to be without everybody. So you're going to be crying, crying, crying. Huh. You're going to cry. So I think it's really like, I have to sit down and think about like what all you guys should know and maybe make a video on it because it's a lot to probably go over um, just off the top of my head. So sorry, Lindsay, but... Let's uh, put that on 
the list, Lex, to maybe make something, or maybe I can make that a topic for the video for maybe next week's live, and then I could just write it all down so that I don't have to sit and kind of think about it all. Okay. Uh, how do you make sure that they have good, clean teeth? Oh, boy. Um, we're probably the worst. We don't brush our dog's teeth. I've said that before. I know, I'm bad. I just don't have time, and I give them lots and lots of um, things to help with their teeth cleaning. So, a lot of bones, a lot of raw hides, a lot of natural bones. You can give your dog those natural bones, which they're... I don't have any right here. I think there's one in the freezer. Um, hey, Gavin, can you go in the freezer for me and get me that big white? No, actually, I have one right here that's hollow. It's fine. Um, you want to self-clean, so you need to be able to give your dogs things that will help do that. And then, of course, dental cleanings, right? So you want to clean their teeth every year. And... Okay, these have marrow in them normally. They don't now. But this is amazing to help with their teeth cleaning. Oh, great. Look what we caused. <laughs> Look what we caused. You guys can have all this stuff. Here, you can have that. Um, <laughs> all right, all right. All right, let me get these here. Oh, he wants to. Look at here. Have that too. Sorry. Distraction. Here, get them. Okay. Um, dental cleanings, and you want to brush your dog's teeth. Do as I say, don't do as I do. When you only have one, you can do it. Brush your dog's teeth, get them a cleaning, and then when they have stinky breath, in the middle of all that, you can get them something like these. They have greenies. They have a lot of things. I don't like the greenies. My dogs used to choke on them, but I did hear that they changed that. Um, the formula and the way they made them, so hopefully they're better now. But because I had that situation, I just stopped buying them all together. A little trick. All right. Um, ready? I'm ready. But are you ready to pick your? Not yet. Oh. I'm gonna give um. I will give you until seven thirty. Perfect. It is seven eighteen. Okay. Perfect. And, and then you at. Thank you, Scott. And then at 7.30, we'll also get Aggie in. Perfect. All right. I'm just, they, I can't give them, I can't make them not get a treat now that they saw the whole thing. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to read you your next question. Okay, Gavin, go for it. All right. Does your husband like that you're a breeder, and does he help you? <laughs> oh, my God. Also, you are the best big pie breeder, in my opinion, and I love that you are always smiling and positive. Aw, who is that? Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. So, yes, 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 he is probably the most helpful. I always tell him he should come in here. We have a panda suit. I want him to wear the panda suit. And he should just go sit down right now. Honey. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. They never get to see you. I need to get my makeup done today. Can you get his makeup done today? Come say hi. Here. Here. Pop up. Um, did you hear that question? Yeah, I did. He's an amazing husband. And look at the puppies love him too. Huh? Yes, they do. But he is probably the most helpful Aaron, man. Aaron, take your hat off. He's, you got to take your hat can't like, see his face. He's like, I ain't taking my hat off. He's a big Angels fan. He's not taking that hat off. Um, <laughs> but he's so helpful, helps me every day, like helps with the live stream. Everything that I need help with, he's always right there. Do you like that I'm a breeder, honey? I do. I do. It's uh, I learned a lot, and it's uh, definitely not what I expected. There's a lot of work, a lot of dedication, a lot of passion, um, and it grew on me. So it definitely, this is a very loving caring prestigious breed so ah good answer honey so yeah there's it i think that was all of it wasn't it yes all right i just made a mess of this you want to stay in here no i'm good <laughs> <laughs> thank you shannon oh thank you shannon so for those of you guys who are interested in what is it that I'm giving them, I'm just giving the puppies some Merrick's um, little plates. They're tiny, tiny little treats. 
and I'm crumbling this tiny treat into really nothing because I don't want them having a lot of treats. So we talk about not giving a three pound puppy a lot of treats that I give a lot of dog food instead. But because I took that down and they smelt everything, I felt bad not giving them something. So that's why you see all these little crumbs now. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Hi, mommy. Would getting the next round of puppy shots at 10 weeks be too soon? Um, so you want to go off of what your vet recommends, but in our area, it is not too soon. So we normally, we normally do um, around eight weeks and then every two to three weeks. So they wouldn't be too soon, but I'm not a veterinarian and I'm not sure of your area. So I would ask your vet. The, the goal is to get them done as soon as you can, because the sooner you get them done, the sooner that you can get them out everywhere, right? And so some places they won't allow you to um, to enroll your puppy into puppy kindergarten or some of those different classes, socializing classes without all of their shots. So the sooner you can, the better. Um, when do they reach their full size and weight? Um, mm -hmm. I say, and this is not for every puppy, right? Because they all grow at different stages, but their weight is usually done before, um, I'm sorry, their height is usually done before they're a year old. So thank any, you, Diane. Thank you, Diane. Anywhere between 10 and 12 months is normally when you're going to see the height be done. And then they're going to fill out and mature. So that's going to take some time. So I would say for this breed, because they're not really um, a big breed, they, they don't take as long to mature. So I see most of my dogs at 18 months are fully developed and mature, and what it, their thickness is is what you're going to see. Uh, Diane gave a super chat with her question, so she hops to the front of the list. Okay. She said, do you think the separation anxiety would, would be lessened if there are other dogs in the home? Yes, for sure. So a lot of dogs um, will feel at ease whenever there's other animals in the home that they get used to. But a lot of it is also going to benefit, even if you have other animals in the house, your puppy still needs a long time. So just because they have a sibling that's not blood related, they still need to learn how to be in a crate on their own. They still need to be able to go to the vets without their buddy. They still, hey, Mark's talking. Um, you wanna be able to take your one dog somewhere and not have to always rely on the other dog. The other thing that you wanna keep in mind if you have more than one is that um, you wanna make sure that you spend quality time with each dog alone so that way you bond with them and they bond with you and that their number one fan and best friend is not the other pet. Because if they become a dog's dog, as I call it, then they're not going to bond with you um, as much as they're going to bond and prefer their other friends. So quality time individually is very, very important. And if you already have a dog um, and then you're bringing in a new puppy, you also don't want your dog that you already have to feel threatened or replaced by the new puppy. So you still want your dog to um, have its individual time with you. All right, ready? Yeah. Um, blazes are a fault, dot, 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 right? Not like any, any pet owner would care. <laughs> no, blazes are not a fault, um, but the full uh, split mask like night has where it comes down although hers is really starting to fill in is considered a fault um but most yes pet owners would never care and honestly if i have to make a decision on a split mass dog who has amazing temperament and structure which by the way night is like stunning in every way or a dog with a full mass but walks funny and doesn't carry his tail right and has um thank you fabiana a, a white tip tail or whatever it is what is my first choice going to be it's going to be night because i'm not looking for just the appearance of the dog i'm looking for the dog as a whole for my breeding program so other things are so much more important than 
the color or the markings, in my opinion. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that I'm okay with breeding dogs that don't have a even mass or dogs that are not symmetrical on their legs or a dog lacking color, that type of thing. That's not what I'm saying. But if it is still within the standards, then I pretty much ignore that in comparison to everything else that I'm looking for. You're rambling. <laughs> I'm passionate about that stuff. And this one kind of ties into that. Does a split mask just mean that it's not symmetrical? No, a split mask is still symmetrical, but a split mask... Come here. Come here, Mommy. So a split means that there's white dividing the markings going down the muzzle. And so this is considered a split. Now, it could be even, and it may not be even, right? So it... Where is little Miss Oakley? I'm going to give you a perfect example. Um, because we've got both here. So a full mask is considered like this. So when there's a solid color down the nose, okay, that is considered a full mask. With or without a blaze, like her brother has the blaze, she does not. A split mask is where... The blaze may or may not be there, but this white line, so for example, this is the blaze, okay? This white going up the forehead, that's called the blaze. The split is where it's going down the muzzle, okay? Now we have two puppies here who both have a split. Hers is filling in. When she was probably, um, probably Ocean's age, you could see that it was not even. So this will change dramatically from now till four, five, six months. So this is um, Ocean. Right now, her markings are very off. So it goes down on one side, but it does not on the other. So this mask is a split mask, but it's uneven. Now, chances of that fixing? Pretty likely because they change so much from now to um, adults when they get their coat. Sorry, baby. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, almost tripped up when I put them here. Um, just like with night, like hers was really off when she was younger. Now it's not. Next. <laughs> uh, how old is Aggie? Uh, four, four, four and a half. I think she's close to the same age as Diamond. Um, I got Aggie from, I don't know off the top of my head, because I got Aggie from my good friend Jen, who stopped breeding. So we didn't have Aggie um, at eight weeks old. Okay. Um, this, sure one's, this one is kind of... Uh, we have one minute. Okay. It's 7.29. Hey, honey, can you start taking the um, babies for me so that way when I'm done here, we can get Aggie in here? Uh, my Kli Kai cleans his teeth by drinking from the sprinklers. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, they get their flossing and everything, huh? Um, I'm going to start handing them to my husband so that way I can keep talking to you when we get Aggie. Next. Um, next question. We've been on the waiting list since May, and we're getting very excited to get a puppy. What are some things you recommend to do slash buy to help prepare and help pass the time? Um, well, I have a whole list on my website of all of the things that either we use or have used or recommend using whenever you're raising a puppy. So I would definitely recommend checking that out first because on our website, under the resources tab, you're going to see a bunch of stuff. So start there, and um, you can slowly start getting a lot of those things. Oh, that's fine. You can come back. Uh, yeah, please. Um, but, I mean, that's not really going to help pass the time, but it'll help get you prepared. And then read books. Make sure that you guys check out um, Zach George. On YouTube and his books they're also on the link on my website so that you guys 
get prepared that way. So the more videos, the more books you read, the more you're going to be prepared to bring it home a puppy and to do it right. So you're going to be able to socialize and train it right and not let it walk all over you. Um, do you ever breed for a certain eye color? Mm, I mean, I don't care if I get bi eyes or brown eyes or blue eyes, but because most of my dogs are blue eyed, um, I get a lot of blue eyes. So I don't necessarily breed for that, but because that's my favorite, because I'm brown eyed, so of course I want my dog to be blue eyed, um, I do get a lot of blue eyes. Okay, it is 7.31. I have picked a winner. Who's gonna get that bandana? Oh, and make sure you ask um, Lex, whoever it is, make sure I know if, which one they want. Oh no, we're gonna send them a code. Never mind. Yeah. Um, do you wanna do you wanna save that? Yeah, I will. Once okay. you. Once oh, you. okay. The winner that gets the bandana is Liz Lauren. <gasps> Liz, congratulations, Liz. Okay, so. The way we're doing the winners now is we have created a code that we will email you. And in that code, um, in that email, it'll just be a little um, free code that you're gonna use on the website. And that way you will be able to pick if you are wanting, sorry, I'm putting all this away because Aggie will eat every one of these bones. Um, that way you can pick if you are wanting the teal or the blue bandana, and then um, we'll get that mailed off to you by the end of the weekend. So congratulations, that was awesome. All right, I am gonna let Aggie in here. Let us know if you're still on. Yes, let, let us know, are you here? I hope you're here. Um, let's see, well I guess I'll let her have one of these. Uh, Aggie is a bone hog, a toy hog, and an attention hog. All three. Ready? Sure, you can let her in. I just didn't want her to try to eat every single one of these bones. Just so you know. Um, so Aggie is due in about, oh, I forget, 10 days. Come, Mama. Come here. Come here, Mommy. So for those of you guys who don't know, this is um, Simba's mommy. So we're so, so, so excited. Come here, they wanna see your belly. Hey, come here. Um, they wanna see the baby belly. Look at them, I wanna see the baby belly. Come here. So she's Simba's mom. She was bred to um, a gray and white, double blue eyed male. Get out of there. And she has really pretty eyes. I wanna see if I can pick her booty up. Can you come here for a minute? Right. Come here. Right. So, let's see. First, I'm going to show them your, your pretty eyes. Maybe. I don't know if I'm at the right level. You are. But maybe you can just, just whistle. Not, she's not looking. If you Ag. whistle, <laughs> she's going to try to jump over there. Bye, 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 bye. Hi, Mama. Hi, baby. Oh, she has so pretty eyes. I hope I'm right. Oh yeah, you can <laughs> she's watching the TV. <laughs> she sees herself. <laughs> Do you see yourself? Huh? That was a good girl. Alright. Come here now. I want to show me your belly. I want to show me your belly. Yeah, I want to show me your belly. Come here. Add. Come here. Come here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chunky. Thank you, Chunky. Mm. Three weeks ago, Lex? Four weeks ago? Uh, I don't know. Three, uh, I think about three weeks ago. And we know for sure there's one in each horn, but there might be a third. And I haven't done another ultrasound um, to confirm or not, but she's pretty big because she usually is smaller. Let's go to the side. How's that? Perfect. Look at those baby belly. Look at that baby belly. Yeah. So there's her tummy. Now she's dying to get this bone. Here. All right. I'll take some questions. That's it. Oh, good. Everybody's in love with Aggie, though. Yeah. She's a sweet, sweet dog. Super sweet dog. Um, I'm with. 
Did you, did you put her on the... Yeah, and I have you in your bubble. So, she's a good dog. She's a good mom. She's a sweetheart. Huh. But she's a bum hog. And then attention hog. Oh, and she tried to kill herself yesterday. <laughs> Just for the record. So, she decided to try to get into the trash. But it's trash day. So, she jumped up into the recyclable trash can. Which is literally a flimsy black trash black a flimsy black trash can with the lid that pops up but it's it's like a $20 trash can outside the lid collapsed of course with how fast she is so she broke the lid there was only maybe 10 cans in there thank, thank you sandy. sandy um and so she was trapped in the trash can with the cans at 11 a.m. You know, Sandy, I knew you would love her. <laughs> Sandy's dying for a red puppy. Um, but that's our little Aggie story, so she's a little pain in the butt. Thank God we were home. Of course, I wouldn't have left her out, but and we couldn't find her. And there she is making sound in the trash can. Any other dogs pregnant? Uh, I don't know. We're going to do an ultrasound tomorrow, but I'm not going to say anything until I know for sure. So I don't know yet. She's saying heaven. I should turn you so they can I see I wonder if they can hear her. Probably. Can you hear her? I'm sure. They have <laughs> to hear that. I'm going to turn her. Come here, guys. Let me turn this. Sit. Sit down for a minute. Perfect. Oh, of course, you're going to move? No. Fully sticks. Now, I gave her the thin ones. So, this isn't the real thick one. We have thick ones and thin ones, and the thin ones are more for the puppies. Mm -hmm. Oh, Michelle's on here. Um, so that's a thin one, so of course she's going to devour it, but the thick ones take her a lot longer. They can hear her chewing, <laughs> for the record. It's the pregnancy. <laughs> uh, we have a couple more questions. Okay, I'm good. Hey, I need my water. Honey, can I have my water? I'm, I'm listening. Uh, Sandy asked who's the daddy. And then Michelle said Klaus. <laughs> yes. And he misses Aggie. Yes, yes, yes. So Michelle, who is on right now, has a gray and white blue eyed male from us. He is stunning, 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 stunning. If you guys, um, Michelle, make sure you put your Instagram in there. So if you're on Instagram, go check him out. But he is the father to Aggie's puppies to be. They're so happy and excited. Um, he's almost identical to Simba. Um, so that's another exciting thing is if I really want to try to get more like gray and white dogs. Um, not only in our breeding program, but just for people because a lot of people really, really like them and they're hard to get. So Michelle owns Klaus and he is daddy. His first litter, by the way, we'll see how he does. We might, it might be great or it might be a disaster. We'll see. Uh, Patricia asked, for a first-time Klikai owner, would you recommend a boy or a girl? Gender doesn't matter to me when I get on the waiting list one day. Um, I don't think it matters regardless as long as you are not a softie, okay, for this breed in general. You don't want to be too soft. You need to be firm. You need to be consistent. But if so, you're not going to, it's not going to make a difference. Just know the differences. Sometimes we see females are a little more dominant, a little more stubborn. Um, sometimes a little less, what is the word? A little less willing to please. Like Simba is like, Oh my God, mama's boy, mama's boy, everybody's boy, wants to please, wants to please, but so overly excited to please that he forgets what he was supposed to do or say. Um, but 
the girls, they're pretty smart and they're stubborn. So just keep that in mind that you want to know what way you you need to pee. Do you want a goofball for a couple of years or do you want a pain in the butt? Yeah. You want to... <laughs> Exactly. Do, you do you recommend keeping a crate in your bedroom? So for sure when you bring home a puppy, you definitely want to have a crate in your bedroom because um, they don't sleep through the night at eight weeks old. So if you don't have a crate in your room or whoever's sleeping, somebody's coming down the stairs. That would hear be that hurricane. <laughs> um, if you don't have a crate in the room, no one's going to be able to cure them if they have to get out and go potty. So come lay down. Um, so yes, super important. When is Raggy due? Mm, the twentieth? No. Twelve? <laughs> Twelve. I don't know why I said twenty. Twelve. Uh, Sean asks, can you explain a little bit about the co-ownership, uh, how the co-ownership works, and how you ended up with Ocean and Opie? Oh, so um. We have people that, it's funny, like, it's not normally set that way, like, especially for Michelle, for example, like, she owns Klaus, it was never set that way, he was sold on a pet contract, but then either I see pictures or they reach out and are, like, so amazed at how their puppy looks and get a lot of compliments that they ask, like, hey, are, what do you think, how's this, you know, dog? Do you want to maybe consider using them in your breeding program? And for the most part, it's usually like, mm, even with Michelle, it was like, not, I mean, not really, I'm good. Like, we don't need it. Um, but then as time went by and it's like, oh my God, this dog is gorgeous. Um, we made an agreement to breed. And so same with Jazz, like, they don't always live here. But if I need those lines back, because sometimes what happens is we, Say, for example, Keanu, what if we retire him and his boy doesn't end up working out? Or what if um, Diamond never gives me a puppy that I can keep from her breeding program, uh, from her that is going to be added to my breeding program? Because a lot of times I do put great quality dogs into pet homes. I can't keep everybody. Um, and so sometimes it just benefits me to say, hey, I really need to add that back into my breeding program. Um, can we work something out? So that's how it is. But it doesn't happen a lot, and it's hard on the owners, especially if it's a female, because then that dog has to come to me for several, several weeks, sometimes months, just depending on, you know, how they, when they have their puppies, how long they really want to deliver, or how long they really want to nurse them, all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's the short end of it. Okay. Can you just relax, miss? Relax. Oh, uh, Michelle posted her IG. Oh, good. I put it on the screen. Yeah. Hey, Michelle, do me a favor. Can you send me some pictures? Because I didn't think about that. I should have got some pictures whenever you guys were here of him um, so that I could, once she has her puppies, I need to be able to post him. Thanks. Um, thank you, Cheryl. Um, she said, our future puppy is going to be adopted into our family for helping cope with depression. Would a boy or girl be better? Mm. Um, probably. Man, it's hard to say because I think you are going to be fine either way. It, do you have other pets in your house? Because I feel like, like all of our girls eventually end up being amazing family dogs that are very loyal and loving. They just take longer to become that way. They finally realize like we're going to always be in control. Um, and boys are always wanting to please and just kind of goofy. So there's benefits to both. Like the girls long-term, you're going to get there, but they're a little moody to begin with. The boys, they're going to take a little longer to actually be trained and be smart. I know I hate saying that, but it's true. Like they just take a little longer to mature. So you'll be fine either way. If you don't care, then just get what you can get. Cause obviously there's such a long wait. And we are good for now. Me and Judy, me and Judy. Get on here. She sees herself. <laughs> 
like it. <laughs> it is 7.45. Don't jump up there. That's not a dog. It's you. Uh, <laughs> Lindsay said, I didn't see Siggy's picture in the puppy album. Did I miss it? Oh, it's probably in there, but there's like probably 600 pictures in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it should be in there. I hope it should be in there. I'm pretty sure it is. It should be. You had yeah. me name all the pictures. Yeah, it should be in there. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw it. Oh, where are you going? You can't fit under there anymore. Well, there's bones under there. I know. She's a hog. Yeah, that's fine, Michelle. I think I can use those. I saw that. Okay. Um. Oh, Sandy. Thank you. What? But she said, can we order the socks now? How many litters can I be mine? Um, you can order the socks. They're just not on my website. You would have to email me. Siggy, put your, I mean, Abby, come here. Um, they're not on my website yet, so I have to get that done, and that just means pictures and creating an item for each one of them. So if you want them now, you can just email me and tell me which what you want. But if you want to wait, you can wait. I promise I'll get them up by the end of the weekend. But if you want, just email me. You can always Venmo me or Zelle. And then how many litters has Aggie had? Not that many. Four? Um, I think four. Um, how many dogs slash puppies do you have in your house? <laughs> too many. Uh, too many. I don't know. Puppies alone, we have uh, six, eight, four, 13? 14? A lot. There's just too many dogs. Oh, Derek, is your daughter on too? <laughs> <laughs> um. Natalia oh, said, any advice for dental hygiene? We kind of talked about this. Yeah, kind of. I mean, um, they have toothbrushes. They have <laughs> toothpaste. <laughs> Very cat-like. She's cleaning her paws. <laughs> All right. Are you clean now? Can we keep going? Oh. Okay. Um, so they have a lot of toothbrushes, that kind of stuff. They also have, let me see your foot. Come here. Come here. Let me just make sure there's nothing in it. Um, bones, dentals every year from your vet. Sometimes we get those little sticker bushes, and I just want to make sure she doesn't have a sticker bush in there. Um, yeah, that's, that's really it. Like just, you want to get all of the natural cleaning stuff. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm getting distracted again. Derek said, yep, both of them. <sighs> Hi girls. I saw him ask a question about the, um, the planning on doing more new owner videos. Yeah. We, the next one. So I already reached out to a couple of people. And they're like, well, it just depends on the timing, blah, blah, blah. Because I know you guys had asked about, well, that would be cool if we got a lot of you guys on, like, a whole Zoom call. Um, and I'm very open to that. It's just trying to coordinate to get everyone to be willing to do it and available on Thursdays. Because, obviously, we do it on Thursdays. Um, so, I am working on it. If you guys are on here and you have a puppy from us already, um, my next person I was going to ask was Aaron and Jack. Um... Matthew, and so I'm going to do it soon, hopefully. Um, is it too confusing to have potty pads in multiple places when trying to potty train? We live in a three-story town home, and I'm afraid puppy won't be able to hold it long enough to get outside. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't put it in multiple places. It's definitely confusing. So when you bring a puppy home, you don't want them to have free run of the whole house anyways. They should only be in a specific area uh, because they're too young. You can't trust them. You will have a harder time potty training your puppy as well. So one area, 
And if you are using pee pads, just know we use pee pads because our puppies are under eight weeks old. If we keep puppies, they don't have pee pads because we want to teach them to go potty outside, not inside. Um, so you will confuse them some. If you live in a high rise, if you're dealing with snow and things, a lot of people are have to. You can also litter box train them, but it also adds confusion. Like, do they go outside? Do they go inside? Do they go in a litter box? Do they go in the grass? So the less you can confuse them, the better. Um, how do you know if your puppy really needs to go to the bathroom or just wants to get out of its crate? Well, it depends on the age because if you're dealing with a young puppy, every time they wake up, they probably have to potty. Um, and so you're talking every one to two hours, they have to go potty. If it is in the middle of the night and your puppy's already over eight weeks old and they normally sleep through the night, they definitely have to go potty or they're not tired because they didn't get enough exercise. Um, but it's better to be safe than sorry. I will tell you more times than not, I'm like, nope, you were just out 30 minutes ago. Nope, it's bedtime and then you don't stop and guess what? They have to go potty. So it sucks because our whole life revolves around them and they get to call the shots kind of when it comes to that because if you don't respond, they're gonna have an accident. So until you learn your dog's like routine and how often they have to go potty, then you should be able to tell the difference. But right now, if it's early, you have to just keep getting up, keep getting up, or don't, and clean it up afterwards. <laughs> Tags. Tags. Come here, mommy. You're going to have babies soon. What do you guys think? Two puppies or three? Huh? You got two babies? What are you doing? You got two babies or three? Huh? <laughs> do you have any more questions for me? No. And we have eight minutes. Ah, okay. Oh, my goodness. Yes. She's a good girl. Huh, she is a good girl. Yeah, are you gonna give us more Simba babies? Huh? Are they gonna look like Simba? Huh? Are they gonna look like Daddy Cows? Huh? Sandy says three. Catherine says I hope three. Yeah. Uh, Scott three said three. Tanya said two. Robin said three. Michelle three. Michelle's hoping for three, huh? We hope Klaus is other Michelle. Oh, it is the other Michelle. <laughs> um, Lindsay said two. <laughs> Your husband said husband four. My husband said four. He's wishful thinking. <laughs> I don't see four in there. But we never know. We never know. All right. How many boys? How many girls? Let's see. Klaus is a first time daddy. Usually... Usually they're off on their timing, so I think there's going to be more girls. That's what I think. But. <laughs> Patricia said four as well. Well, I like you and Eric's answers, that's for sure. Hmm. Jennifer said two boys, one girl. Okay. One boy, one girl. <laughs> one boy, two girls. One oh, red boy, one red and two, boy. One red boy and two gray girls. <laughs> Sandy with the detail. I love it. I love it. Uh, okay, can you come down? Come lay down there. He says, I see a dog and it's sitting there looking at us. What is it doing? <laughs> <laughs> two girls, one boy, two girls, one boy. Michelle says three girls. <laughs> two girls, one boy. Come here, Mommy. Come here. Aw. Well, we'll see soon enough. Huh. Oh, you gotta get. Oh, you gotta get. You know what Sandy wants from this? I know. The one red boy. The one red dog. Huh. <laughs> Gonna give us some reds? We didn't test Klaus, so we don't know if he has the red gene. He could. Uh, his dad has the red gene. Uh, by the way, his dad is um, Diamond's dad. So Klaus is from, Klaus is Diamond's half, Diamond and Ziggy's half brother. Uh, that's kind of
kind of exciting too. It's crazy how it all goes around. I really, really want to do uh, the video on the um, the Klikai tree, the whole family tree of Kika, and I found some pictures. I've been doing all this research finding dogs that I haven't had pictures of in a long time. So I want to build this tree so you guys can literally see like the generations and how it went back and where it's at now and how the dogs look and if they've made any changes. Um, one day. What do you see? No questions? We're good? Yeah, we're good. Oh my God. Love it. Okay, so I'm going to take a second. How many people do we have and how many thumbs ups do we have? 72 and 74. Oh my God. Good job, guys. Okay, so I don't know if everybody on here is those 72 and 74, but if you haven't already, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up because we want to see that you like what we're doing. But also, because this is what happens, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but almost every week we get a thumbs down. We get one thumbs down, maybe two thumbs down. I don't know if that's people who really just dislike seeing puppies um, or if they accidentally are hitting it with the phone. So if you look to make sure that you hit thumbs up, then you'll know that you didn't hit the thumbs down. And then we now we'll have 76. See? And everybody will hit the thumbs up. Um, so sometimes I know even my husband will do it where he's holding his phone and he accidentally hits it and it's a thumbs down. Um, but it could be people just don't like puppies. I don't know why they're watching us if they don't like puppies. But whatever. Uh, we're now at 81. I love you guys. I honestly think that you guys are the best community of all. Like, how awesome is it that I get to spend my Thursday with you guys? So I appreciate you guys spending your Thursday with us and being committed to this every single week like we are um, because without you, we wouldn't be here. If we didn't have you guys, there would be no reason. So I want to thank you and say how much I appreciate everything that you guys do for us. Um, and in return, we love doing it for you. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. I know we have a few more minutes, but... Um, I'm going to wait for a question. I do have some questions. Kind of nice. It's nice not having the puppies in here. See why I like, oh, this is my time to relax. It's not crazy. Okay, it's our go cool ahead. down time. It is our cool down time. Before we go eat dinner mm -hmm. at 8 o'clock. <laughs> we eat dinner on Thursdays at like 8.30. Thank you. All right. See that amazing husband of mine? He's going to pick us up. Uh, Sandy asks, do they have more or less energy before labor? Oh, it gets crazy. Like, they're so antsy. Um, their eyes are, like, bugging out of their head, and they can't just stay still. And they're, usually it's, like, anxiety where they just want to know where I'm at and that I'm with them. Hey, get off of me. There's, that's not another dog. It's you. It's you, boo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here's Fabiana said she thumbs up on both of her accounts. Oh, thank you. Hi, mommy. Hi, Where can I find that awesome mural behind you? Amazon. Although, I don't know if it's still available, um, but I found it on Amazon. Oh, my goodness. You need to get brushed. You're shedding. You're shedding. Yeah. What is the most common coat color and eye color? Um, in our breeding program? Gray and blue-eyed. Yeah, gray and blue-eyed um, is the most common. And then as far as produced, um, it's split. Go, go watch last week's video because we explain like the percentages that we've been seeing on grays, reds, blacks. But every year is a little different too. So it's not like it's the same because obviously we're breeding different dogs with different studs and so we get different things. It's really cool because we don't want to be able to see the same over and over again. While we're on the topic of color, real quick, I had somebody reach out to me yesterday that is in Oregon and they wanted to know if I could tell them if this puppy was a clique high or not because they were offered a all white puppy, no, I'm sorry, a gray and white puppy um, in Oregon for $1,900. So I asked her who if she could share who it was, if they had a website, that way I could at least let her know if they're a known breeder or not. 
And she sent me pictures of a gray and white, weird looking dog, and an all white dog. So whoever this person is, they bred an all white, supposed clique high to a gray something, and they got a gray puppy. Um, so just a heads up for those of you who aren't familiar, Alaskan Klikai that are all white cannot be bred. Um, it is, hey, why are you marking? Huh? She says, I'm pregnant, that's why. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I had to watch that anyways. Thanks. Siggy, come lay down. Her name's not Siggy. I mean, Aggie, come lay down. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't name Aggie or Siggy. <laughs> The same person owned both dogs, can you tell? <laughs> and Ozzy. <laughs> I love you, Jen. But the, your dog's name's a little weird. <laughs> so anyways, back to my spill. White clique Kai should not be bred. They are not supposed to be bred. Don't buy a puppy from somebody breeding a white dog saying it's a clique Kai because now you're supporting them and they are going to continue to do things they shouldn't be doing. Well, it is 8.01, but I have one more question. Okay. And I have a couple of comments that I thought were cute. Okay. Jen said, best two hours of the week. Yay. Uh, Catherine said, tonight flew by. It did fly by. Sandy said, love you both. Thanks, so informative. You're welcome. We love you too. And then Lisa said, thank you. My kids like to watch with me and they're learning a lot. Aww. I love hearing that the kids watch it. And then Kim has a question, and she said, I know you get this every week, but how long is your waiting list? And how long? And is it long because people are picky? I've been looking around, and I think your dogs are the most gorgeous. Thank you, Kim. Um, we don't give the number because this is a public forum, and I have nosy people that I don't want to know any of my stuff. Um, so I'm not sharing that. I will say it is 18 months. No joke, 18 months before anybody knew would get a puppy from us. Give or take a month or so. But the reality is I don't know if it's a combination of obviously the coronavirus and a lot of people now wanting a dog um, that didn't before or our YouTube channel and our presence. Um, I'm not really sure. I think it's probably a combination of things, but I've never been this busy, ever. I've been breeding a really long time. So I guess I should be happy, but it's kind of overwhelming. All right, well, that's it, everybody. That's it. Thank you guys. I love you guys. I thank you guys so much for all of your support. I don't even have a puppy in here to say goodbye with. Come here, Aggie. <laughs> you guys get a pregnant dog today. She's like, no. You have to pee? Oh, don't pee on me. Don't you pee on me. Thank you for the kisses. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys for the support and the love. And until next time, bye.